Bees, we are to the end of our co-host favorites on the tail end of Breed's Greatest Hits. We have our co-host greatest hits or whatever I'm going to end up calling it in the show notes because these don't drop for a little while. (laughs) So we've heard one from Rachel. We've heard one from Aaron. And now today it's my turn. Yeah. So Sarah, (laughs) tell us about the episode that you have selected for us to enjoy again. So this was super hard. I had a lot of choices. There have been so many episodes where my abs hurt because I'm laughing so much and or crying so much because I'm laughing so hard. So this was very difficult. However, there are a couple that that stand out in my mind, one of which was the VBS snacks episode. Mm. But Rachel wanted to do Jello, and that's totally fine. So she got the food episode. I chose another <laughs> episode that also has food in it. <laughs> so this is the trivia challenge for Mardi Gras because the biggest reason I chose this was because we talk about punchkis for like 10 minutes. Not really. It's like five. But I love punchkis and talking about punchkis. <laughs> I You're think so I, delicious. I screamed a lot during this episode. <laughs> we talk about prune punchkis. Which is Aaron Aaron loves prune punch keys. But also, I re-listened to this just to remind myself what this episode actually involved. This was episode 22. So we were we were like baby podcasters oh at this point. This is pre-pandemic, ladies lounge. This episode dropped three wow. weeks before we all went home for like a year and a half. So it was it was interesting to go back and like just listen to us at a time when we had no idea what was coming. <laughs> just this freedom so of enjoying. <laughs> but also I think I love Rachel's trivia challenges. Mm. They're always so fun and informative and I love learning random facts and there are so many interesting tidbits about Lent and Mardi Gras and Mardi Gras around the world and all of this just really fun stuff. So I thought I would close it out with some fun trivia about Mardi Gras and punch keys. Here we go. Listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And we have a trivia episode today. Trivia with Rachel. Yeah. Yay. And this is the time of the year uh, where we get to Lent, which means we have things like Mardi Gras. And if you're in St. Louis, Mardi Gras is a real thing. What is it like? Or the if largest? you're in actually New Orleans. Or New Orleans. This is true. Uh, St. Louis is like the the <laughs> second biggest one outside of New Orleans, isn't it? I think I think I've that's heard a fact. Facts that could be. I don't know. Anyway, Rachel, <laughs> what are you triviaing <laughs> us about? <laughs> we are t- we are talking Mardi Gras. I mean, that's the time Ooh, of yeah. year. Awesome. And there are actually some interesting, um, you know, like religious and theological aspects to this. It, it just isn't some spontaneous festival with with beads and parades and stuff um <laughs> and we're gonna talk about that so are you ready for the mardi gras of all mardi gras quizzes i did that I've done yes this week? i didn't yes. wear my beads today but yes i'm ready that's I don't okay have any i have mardi gras beads at home it's pretty I cool do too i have a giant box of them they're fun i like the colors okay. oh and king cakes but anyway sorry <laughs> are we ready yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> do it question one what does mardi gras mean Fat, Fat the words Mardi Tuesday. Gras. Yes, ma'am. I had no idea. <laughs> it's yeah, it French. literally is just French for Fat Tuesday. That's awesome. Um, which is, for those few uninitiated, it's the last day before Ash Wednesday. It's the time when, if you are of a persuasion that you do fasting type stuff for Lent, you got to get all that stuff you're fasting from out of the house. So that means giant smorgasbord and also getting a lot of, I don't know, energy out before you become somber, Mm -hmm. Um, especially in Catholic tradition-based communities. So, but Mardi Gras is not the only name for Fat Tuesday. So we're going to do a little geography quiz. Can you tell me what Mardi Gras is known as in each of the following places? Probably not. First, England. Shrove Tuesday. Tuesday. 
Yes. Good yes. Oh, Very good. Nice job, Brie. Second, Brazil. <laughs> Carnival. 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 Yes. Man, you guys are smart. <laughs> and Germany for all our German Lutheran people out there. October. F- October. Fest. March. Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, and this is this is tricky because in German in Germany there are several different names that are given to this same sort of phenomenon. But Fetter Dienstag, Fat Tuesday. Oh, I would. Never um, but it, it also mm-hmm. could be Fastenabend or Fastnachstag, uh, which basically means uh, Lent Eve. Oh, uh, Fastenabend! I like that one. Mm. Yeah, I'm I like start that calling too. it that. <laughs> so Brazil isn't the only place that calls its pre-Lent festival Carnival. It traditionally goes by this name in many places around the world, including especially Venice. Ah. Um, So that was one of the, in medieval times, Carnival in Venice was like the Mardi Gras, New Orleans capital of Europe. But what does the word Carnival actually mean? And it's not a cruise line. Something to do with meat. Meat something. Mm -hmm. Oh, Meat fest. Yeah, meat fest. Maybe. That's a good (laughs) Meat parade. Meat parade. (laughs) So there are two possible Latin roots for this word, both of which are quite appropriate. One is carne levare, which is to remove the meat, Ah, get rid of it. mm -hmm. Uh And the other, which I like better and maybe isn't as, I don't know, not as many scholars go for this one, but I love this, Uh, carne vale. And vale in Latin just means bye-bye. So oh. bye bye meat. Bye meat. <laughs> bye meat. I love Carnival. You. <laughs> I love bye meat bye. so much. Mm. Yeah. So me too. Obviously, one purpose behind these uh, Mardi Gras celebrations has always been to use up foods from the larder that would not be eaten or consumed during Lent. And spoiler from most of church history, people didn't get to choose their Lenten fast. Like no saying, I'm giving up chocolate or ketchup or social media the church told you what you were going to abstain from (laughs) right so can you tell me which foods in western catholic tradition are are given up for lent or at least were in the medieval era and thus needed especially to be used up by ash wednesday is meat one of them Mm -hmm. definitely Mm -hmm. okay good there was a lot of fish eaten during lent Um, because fish of course aren't meat we are so Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good guess. Lard, Lard fats. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. I, I have to think there has to be something to do with the ingredients that you use for pancakes, since that's a tradition yeah, like associated flour. with oh. sugar? Fat Tuesday. Maple syrup? Well, yeah, although in medieval Europe, a lot of, I mean, sugar was not a thing they that a lot really of people have a thing. had. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying Twinkies is out of the question. <laughs> that's not Wait, Twinkies yeah. weren't in the Middle Ages? What? <laughs> <laughs> the other two notable ones are eggs mm-hmm. and oh. dairy. And what? Dairy. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. So, so that explains yeah. the pancakes. That would explain a lot. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. they all went almost like vegan. Right. Almost, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. With fish. A lot right. of fish. Yeah. But that actually so, came later. Fish, it didn't used to be fish. Like that was a special exception given because there was huh. apparently a terrible, terrible famine, I want to say. Oh. And so the Pope said, from now on, on Fridays during Lent, you may eat fish in huh. memory of these people who suffered this terrible, terrible tragedy Thanks, or Pope. famine. Wow. Uh, and so That's that was a later, uh, fish Fish re-entered Lent later. It wasn't always. Oh, my goodness. And huh. yeah, the, the fishing, the fishing, the connection of fish to fast is just a really fascinating thing. I love the story. This is totally off topic. Uh-huh. That's but of fine. Queen Elizabeth adding in fish fast days, Queen Elizabeth the first, for the purpose of making fish a larger part of the food economy and sending more people out to fish in the ocean so that the Navy would have better trained sailors. Oh, it was a national clever. security thing. Yes. It's always political and about money. I mean, wow. everything right. goes down to that. I don't believe that. <laughs> so, Okay. As secular historians love to point out, there were some multiple benefits of giving up these foods at this particular time of year. Why might giving up meat, eggs, dairy have been convenient for a European farmer? There's no refrigeration. In the pre-modern era. Oh, yeah. That's, refrigeration? But it's a cold time of year, so well, I'm not sure... 
the refrigeration. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Hmm. That is something. I mean, the meat keeps really well in the winter, but yeah. as the spring comes along, yeah, all that it would be pork time. that you've been saving up starts to not be quite so nice. Um, the natural refrigeration time is coming to an end. Um, and then also, this is a time of year. Is something to do with, with baby babies? Baby cows? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot of cows, <laughs> their milk sort of naturally dries up when they're oh. in the later stages of their pregnancy, yeah. getting ready to have their calves. Chickens, yeah. too, don't lay a whole lot this time of year. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay. kind of works out. It's convenient. Huh. Now, of course, we have eggs and milk in the supermarket year round, and so we don't pay attention to these cycles <laughs> quite in the same way. Mm -hmm. Nope. So as I mentioned above, this holiday is traditionally known as Shrove Tuesday in yeah. England and in the Anglican churches. And we also use it a lot in Lutheran circles, presumably because it doesn't have some of the same baggage as Mardi Gras and Carnival do. There's like <laughs> no topless street parties yep. <laughs> associated with Shrove Tuesday. Um, Sounds and we love pancake too. suppers. Mm, it does. Yeah, we do. So where does the Shrove in Shrove Tuesday come from? I always think of it like a veil, but that might have nothing to do with anything. Nope. It's yeah, something no. to do with, isn't it something to do with shriven? Which I don't remember. Yes, ma'am. It's an old English term, shriven. and I'm trying to remember Shrived. what exactly it means. Shrived? <laughs> Shrift? <laughs> Shoot. Uh, once you say it, I'm going to be like, yes, but at the moment I can't come up with it from context. <laughs> nope. I've, it's one of those words that I only ever learned in context as opposed to actually learning. To be shriven, and all you Shakespeare scholars out there will will oh. get. Wait, wait, this, one or... last guess. Cut off. <laughs> no, nope. that was okay. Then, then I'm done. <laughs> it's an okay. it's an old term for having gone through confession and absolution. Oh, so if you if you die unshriven, mm -hmm. that's to die without last rites. Huh. Um, and it's a it's a big deal. So Shrove Tuesday comes from that same word shrive. Uh, it's when everyone's making their final confessions before Lent. And if they've, you know, Mardi Gras it up, they probably have a lot to get off their <laughs> huh. consciences. Huh. Okay. You ain't wrong. <laughs> okay, there's one other name for this holiday that we haven't talked about yet. So this one, this question is specifically for Sarah. <gasps> Does it have what to do with you what call I think it has to Fat do with? Tuesday in Detroit's Polish neighborhood Hamtramck. <gasps> Punchki Day! I love Punchy so much. Yes! I was hoping you would bring that up. <laughs> oh man, I've got like five Punchkey. questions on Punchy. So strap it's one of them. In. How to how to spell it? <laughs> yes. P a z z k i. P a z z k i. I love Punchy okay. so much. P a c z k i. There's one letter in that that is sort of weird. It with has the C with it's the little, little hooky curly thing on it. on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punchkeys, not spelled like they. Uh, sound at all because no. Polish people are awesome that way. I love punchki. So a punchki, of course, is a delicious and incredibly rich filled jelly donut. Or custard. It's great for using up lard and eggs and things like that in your pantry. What are the traditional flavors for the filling? I've got two possible options, one which is more common, but the other I'll accept. Is custard one of them? Prune. No, ma'am. Oh, I was going to say, like, prune. Raisin? Prune it is. <laughs> It's Fig. yep, prune or plum jam. I had and one of those. Other, yes. yes, is it good? It's so delicious. <laughs> I mean, oh I assume it's goodness. good. All it punchkeys are good. Yeah, yeah. I like raspberry myself. Mm. Me too. Okay. Okay. Another the fan. other traditional flavor, though. Oh, another custard. traditional flavor would be rose water, oh. uh. which was a much more common flavoring in Europe before they got access to things like chocolate and vanilla. <sighs> wow, so. I'm really curious what that would taste like. I always Despair. try things with rose water, thinking I should like them. And Never. it tastes like eating soap is what it tastes like. Turkish delight? Yes, it does. Not delightful. So sad. No. Nope. That is really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never got one of those in high school. Maybe someday I'll <laughs> so, grow into it. Go with the raspberry. If yeah. given a chance. <laughs> the prune. Go with the prune. Go with the raspberry. Oh, okay, go with the prune. Be traditional. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar. Oof. All in your face. Custard's amazing. Mm. Now, while we're talking about Polish tradition here... We always think of Punchki Day as being synonymous with Fat Tuesday. But what day of the week is Punchki Day traditionally celebrated on in Poland? I don't actually know that. Monday. Mon I'm going to say Monday. Monday. Nope. Sunday? 
Let's keep Thursday. Our way Thursday. <laughs> what? Like the Thursday before or the Thursday after Ash Wednesday? Be Thursday, Thursday after? Be- that's what I'm I saying. Of course, I learned that at some point. So it kicks off the week before Ash yes. Wednesday. Yes. You s- yes. So Mardi Gras is more than one day long. And in oh, New yeah. Orleans, it often stretches from like Epiphany yeah. <laughs> until to December. Ash Wednesday. Oh, oh. Just sort King of like cake. gradually Epiphany. grows. Um, so Punchki Day is actually the Thursday before Fat Tuesday when people mm-hmm. are just starting to sort of like kick it into high gear a little bit. And this also is a tradition in Germany. So according to the blog, the Oma way, Oma, of course, is, <gasps> Oma. Ger- is grandma. In Germany, they have names for all six days leading up to Ash Wednesday. And some oh. of these are really good. And and many places, Germans up until recent times were not terrifically unified. So you've got tons of different names for each of these days, but you'll get the basic idea. So you've got Starting this Thursday, you might have Fetter Donnerstag, Fat Thursday, mm-hmm. also sometimes called Schmutziger Donnerstag, <gasps> yes! Muddy Thursday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you've got Schmalzigen Samstag, Schmaltzy Saturday. <laughs> nice. Wait, what was Friday? Well, we're getting to that because this episode is airing on a Friday. Uh, and that's your question. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Schmaltz. Can you guess okay. what the German name is for? Today, the Friday before Ash Wednesday. So we've had so what's Muddy fr- Thursday what's, and Schmaltzy Saturday. What's Friday in German? I don't speak German. Freitag. 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 You can give Freitag. me a guess in English. What would you call the Friday before Ash Wednesday? Wait, what does Schmaltzy, Schmaltzy mean? What does Schmaltzy mean? It's uh, it doesn't Schmaltz. translate very well. No. Schmaltz. Schmaltz. Isn't it the, it's Isn't that like sugary sweet or something? Oh, All right, Google I, it. I, Google I, it and I tell thought me. it was like the chicken fat. Am I Where's my totally phone? Oh, my phone's up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you on my phone. That's why I can't find it. It's excessively, it's excessive sentimentality or it's rendered chicken fat. Ha! Oh, chicken oh, fat. Oh, oh, that is right. Nice. Same difference. Okay. So, chicken fat. <laughs> Chicken fat Let Saturday. the record show. Rendered chicken fat Saturday. Yes. So what are we? Oh, we're um, trying to figure out what is Friday in between somewhere between schnitzel. mud Beef. and rendered chicken fat. Oh, you're right. Okay, so maybe there's a progression here. So that's it what goes I was getting from at. brown to yellow. What's in between? Something orange. Orange. Pumpkin. Nope. Pumpkin beefy? Friday. Nope. Beefy Friday. <laughs> I love beefy. You're not gonna get it. I'll just <laughs> give it to this? you because it's awesome. It is actually, it's Rusiger Friday, Freitag, which is Sooty Friday. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're going the wrong way. Yeah. People would sort of go around and prank each other by, by like rubbing soot on someone's Ooh, face. That's my kind of jam. <laughs> do you want to bring that back, Brie? <laughs> yeah, I do. Today's the day. That's, so like, hmm, okay. all of these six days uh-huh. culminate, of course, on Dienstag. Fat Tuesday, which is celebrated with parades and masquerade balls, and even this old tradition of burning a straw doll sort of in effigy to sort of wipe out all your indiscretions mm. uh, from the previous six wow. days to get ready for Lent. Six, just so, six days. Well, I yeah, German they in were German. full of, full of fun. <laughs> These are German so, six days. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Germany, along with so many other countries, has celebrated Carnival or its various, you know, manifestations for centuries. It's a tradition, however, that not unlike Halloween in our day and age, let us all remember our conversation at that time, it's always been a little controversial. Church leaders on both sides of the Reformation weren't exactly comfortable with some of the customs, but they understood practically that there was a it was useful to have a holiday that provided an outlet for some pent up energy. And like so the purge? mostly they yeah. <laughs> mostly they took a sort of live and let live approach to it. For example, in three days of Googling every time I got a free moment, I could not find a single Luther quote that dealt directly with Carnival. <laughs> And considering that the man talked about everything else under the sun, this sort of surprised me. And if you find one out there, send it to me because I would love to read his take on this. It's obvious that Protestants did eventually crack down on the practice. For So now you have lots of carnival activity taking place in, in Catholic communities. You don't see Baptists having Mardi Gras in their church basement. So it's definitely more of a Catholic thing than a, than a Protestant thing. However... 
In the early days of the Reformation, Carnival seems to have played a role as it gave rowdy young men a built-in opportunity to vent some of their frustration and resentment at the Catholic Church. So you've got this time already set aside in the calendar to just like break free and go nuts. And you're feeling all this like rage at some of these abuses. So what are you going to do? You're going to put the two of them together. And I don't think that this is necessarily in the spirit of, you know, joy in the gospel so much as it is anger at abuse. But it's interesting to see how these coincide. So we are getting to a question here in a bit, but I got so interested in this <laughs> The stories are fascinating, facts. though. Yeah. Right. In his 1978 article on Reformation Carnival and the World Turned Upside Down, which was published in the journal Social History, scholar Bob Scribner details 24 separate incidents between 1520 and 1543 in which carnival traditions and Reformation-inspired anti-Catholic sentiment joined forces in a hard way. So one such set of festivities took place in Wittenberg the spring after Luther received and burned his papal bull of excommunication in a carnival-like, you know, atmosphere (laughs) of bonfires and rowdiness. Jollity. (laughs) So right after, this had happened in the fall before, and tensions are high, and so here comes Fat Tuesday. (laughs) And some students decided to hold a little celebration. Who bore the brunt of this celebration and what might have happened to him. And when I say bore the brunt, I mean in effigy. Oh, the, po- the Pope. The Pope. That's in effigy. Yeah, it was the Pope. Of course it was the <laughs> <Yeah>. Pope. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> and what might have gotten thrown at the person uh, Schmaltz. impersonating Schmaltz. the Pope? Punchkeys. Oh. No, Such much worse. Grace. Uh, no. Oh, no, Poop. 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 Yeah. Here's a quote from Dr. Scribner's article. The second incident, so he's he's listing these 24 incidents. He says, the second incident also occurred in in Wittenberg on Fasnach, the 12th of February, 1521. A figure representing the Pope was carried about in the city and was pelted on the marketplace, presumably with dung. Along with cardinals, bishops, and his servants, the uh, the Carnival Pope was then hunted through the streets in great merriment. Students also seem to have staged a Latin Carnival play, ridiculing the Pope and indulgences. So this kind of like mayhem tended to erupt right before Lent at a time when people had always sort of let things bubble up to the surface. Mm -hmm. And you see these sorts of things pop up you know, in cities around Germany throughout the years following the Reformation. So, yeah, that was, I'm glad we don't do that anymore. (laughs) (laughs) But it seems to have provided an outlet at that time. All right. (laughs) So Luther, can't find a, a, a carnival quote from him. Again, if you have one, send it to me. Um, but he did have a thing or two to say about the tension between feasting and fasting, between sin and righteousness that underpinned both the carnival traditions and the Lenten traditions that followed them. So we're going to take a quick break from the quiz to have some wise words from Martin Luther. And I want to uh, give a shout out to Pastor Brian Wolfmuller for reminding Mm -hmm. me of this passage by sharing it on his blog. This is from the tract Christian Liberty. And it talks about... Lent, Luther on Lenten fasting, basically, uh, and not just Lenten fasting. He was big into fasting year-round, actually. So he writes, Thus it comes that from the requirements of his own body a man cannot take his ease, but is compelled on its account to do many good works, that he may bring it, that is his body, into subjection. Yet these works are not the means of his justification before God. He does them out of disinterested love to the service of God looking to no other end than to do what is well-pleasing to him whom he desires to obey dutifully in all things. On this principle, every man may easily instruct himself in what measure and with what distinctions he ought to chasten his own body. He will fast, watch, and labor, just as much as he sees to suffice for keeping down the wantonness and concupiscence of the body. But those who pretend to be justified by works are looking not to the mortification of their lusts, but only to the works themselves. 
thinking that if they can accomplish as many works and as great ones as possible, all is well with them and they are justified. Sometimes they even injure their brain and extinguish nature, or at least make it useless. This is enormous folly and ignorance of Christian life and faith, when a man seeks without faith to be justified and saved by works. And I I really love that quote. It's a good one for me to remember as we prepare to go into Lenten fasting, to remember our works don't save us, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't what he calls chasten the flesh, Mm -hmm. you know, really take it, uh, pay some attention to disciplining ourselves by fasting, by works, by all that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Words of wisdom from Mm -hmm. Luther himself, but you all didn't come here for words of wisdom. (laughs) That's just an added bonus. You're welcome. You came for quiz questions. Yes. So here's another, and it's another Luther quote. So you have probably heard the famous words of Luther, sin boldly, Mm -hmm. Uh, a quote that often gets dragged out at this time (laughs) of year in particular. (laughs) So here's your question. Can you tell me the rest of that quote? But trust in the grace of God even more boldly. Wow. Close enough. I'll give it to you. (laughs) Nice job, Bray. Thank you. Be a sinner and sin boldly but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. Yes. I'm so close. The, the yeah. Whole, yeah, it's even better. You get the, you get the credit uh, You know, I bet one. it's just a translation difference, Brie. Yeah. I bet you had it perfect. She, that's how my husband the, says it. Yeah, Cru- she was doing the NIV. NIV. Yeah. On that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the B-E-G-V. <laughs> of course. The Google International version yes. <laughs> of Luther's works. <laughs> Yeah, we often, uh, people think of sin boldly, and yet that is, to to say that is to take it out of context. It's mm-hmm. to admit you are a sinner. That is mm-hmm. what you are. That is what you will always be as long as you are in the flesh. But, and I love that, but, but believe, but, but trust in Christ even more boldly. Now, to end our quiz, let's go back to where we started, to the epicenter of Mardi Gras celebrations in the United States, not St. Louis, New Orleans. Sorry, Sarah. (laughs) Soulard. (laughs) Soulard. You may have heard of, and if you're lucky, you've even eaten a New Orleans king cake. Yes! Mm -hmm. I love king cake. Can you tell me what the traditional colors of this delightful confection are and what those colors mean? Aren't they purple, green, and yellow? Yeah, yes. purple, green, and gold. Uh huh. Right. Um, king, royalty. Purple, purple is royalty. Um, life is Lo- green. Or like fortune. And or yeah. Gold is gold. Gold. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> well, according, and I'm sure that you can find different meanings for this. I'm guessing more theological meanings. Oh. Um, oh. But the first, well, you know, can tell ten you pages on Google. Well, royalty still fits. Uh, yeah. Tell we'll tell you King that the purple Jesus. stands for justice. Oh, I the was green off. stands for faith. <laughs> oh. The gold stands for power. Ha, okay. And, <laughs> okay. and what then is in it. the very middle of the cake? Baby Jesus. A baby. It's a yeah, it's a baby and it is. It's baby Jesus. Don't and I love baby thinking Jesus. of <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> well, it's you got to be careful when you eat these. Yeah. Well, and and that's that's the thing. You think of this as, oh, isn't that slightly irreverent, you know, to put the baby from the nativity into a cake and bake it up and then, you know, whoever finds the baby is gets a, you know, special prize or something. But I think this cake, as seemingly secular as it may be, gives us a wonderful way in which to think about Mardi Gras in general. Mardi Gras is not an excuse to get all your sinning and self-indulgence out of the way before Lent. It's not an excuse to sin, but rather it's an opportunity to celebrate fully and completely the epiphany of our Lord, that Christ came to the earth as a tiny baby, hence the baby. He's at the center of the celebration, Mm -hmm. clothed in justice, faith, and power. Hmm. He lived, he grew, he walked with us, he shared his life with us, he showed us his glory and his compassion. And while the glorious reality of the incarnation should not be used as an excuse to sin, it is always worth throwing a big party over. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. And so yep. that's what that's what Mardi Gras can be. It's not the, you know, uh oh, we're going into Lent, better live it up now. Right. It's the we've just had weeks of reflecting on the epiphany of our Lord. Let's party. <laughs> So before we descend with Christ in the wilderness, we can take a day or two or six Germans and Polish people. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. I like that. Plan. Or just the entire like end of winter, New Orleans, <laughs> to remember <laughs> and give thanks for Christ's human life among us. So happy Sooty Friday, everyone. That's the Sooty end of your Friday. quiz. Now go eat a punchki. Yes. (laughs) Oh, please. Like, seriously, go find a punchki somewhere. Um, Even if that means. You will not regret it. Or a king cake. Or a king cake. I like punchkis better. Why not both? Just, just, like, travel to Hamtramck in Detroit and just get, like, a real legit punchki because you will not regret it. Or Krakow. Or Krakow. Even the ones at the grocery (laughs) store are pretty good. I mean, yeah, they're all great. (laughs) Can't go wrong. It's true. So thanks, guys. This was this was really fun. That was a great quiz. That was fun. That was so fun. Spun this whole microphone around. I think we actually got a lot of those right too, which is yeah, we you did. did. You're, we're getting better at these. We are. Or are making them easier? I'm not sure. I don't know. I mean, some of it probably depends on the topic too. Hey, come on, punchkeys. Right. S- spare me. Exactly. I am. I'm so that pleased Tuesday. that you all just like knew the punchkey questions right off. Oh, of course. <laughs> that was my childhood. I would. I would verse you in punchkey. Like trivia night. Oh boy! Yeah. I would take you down to Chinatown. Okay, I'm wrapping anyway, this up. Sorry, <laughs> wrap it up, girl. <laughs> We're as loopy as if we had already all eaten a bunch of punch keys. It's true. Take us home, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find all of these great. Of course, great episodes of the Lutheran Ladies Lounge at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can also find them on your podcasting app if you just search for uh, KFUO Radio or Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You should be able to find us. And if you're not in our Facebook group yet, you should be because we like to have fun. We like to share stories and ideas and resources and funnies. We have a lot of LOL days in the lounge. It's great. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree, a.k.a. Pizza Cat. <laughs> and I am Rachel. <laughs> Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge.